Hey friends, let's talk about iPad upgrade and which one I bought in 2021. Probably you read that already in title, but if not, I didn't get M1 iPod. To be honest, I wanted to buy one and even ordered 16 gigabytes of the RAM, one terabyte version, but the waiting time was so long and I had quite a few chances to change my mind. And yeah, that's what I did. A lot of people buying devices based on potential performance. I'm guilty in that as well and quite often we are spending more money than necessary just because someone said that this device is more powerful. Sure. <laughs> Technically, that most likely is true and a more expensive device will be more powerful. But the question is, do we really need all that power? Sure. The device is more powerful, you will be able to use it longer, but how long you will keep it? Two, three years or even more? I don't know. My old iPad is still powerful enough to handle tasks that I do daily, but I upgraded. iPad is a great multipurpose device. Open it and use it as a laptop. Remove that from keyboard and you have a really nice reading device. I like to read on that. And also, of course, Apple Pen, that is just magic thing. I like to use it for handwriting and uh, sketching, all that stuff. Really handy, really great device. Love it. Of course, there are quite a few cons as well, but uh, you can even attach that to the external monitor, keyboard, and use it as a desktop computer. I have to grab a package on my way back to home office, so we can go to home office and I will show you how I use it in office and we'll talk about pros and cons what I see from them. And yeah, why didn't I get M1 iPad? So, what's in the box? Let's check that first. Those are coding flip-flops. Aren't they cool? Good? Yeah. Lucas? Not sure I was still. Yeah. One for my body. Another one for myself. Okay. Seems that he doesn't like it. So, why 2020? iPad and not M1. In my opinion, if you can get used 2020 iPad, those are the best deals in the market right now. Or probably you can find discounted 2020 model somewhere in third party resellers. Apple, of course, selling M1 iPads right now. Buy the 2020 iPad from guy who just upgraded to M1 iPad. Those are the greatest deals in the market right now. That's what I did. Yeah, but what's the difference between those two models? Of course, that's processor and memory in new iPads. Of course, you can get 16 gigabytes of the RAM, faster processor, but what's the difference? M1 is tiny bit faster comparing with 2020 iPad. A12Z processor or whatever it is named, doesn't matter. That is tiny bit faster, but most of the users, including me, will not see difference. Of course, I have my old iPad here. This one is six years old, has cracked screen and that is my reason why I am upgrading. M1 is great in my MacBook Pro but I can really live without it in the iPad and even more even Apple didn't say why do we need M1. What are benefits for users who will get M1 iPad instead of the old iPads? or iPad Air which are still on the sale and do not use M1 chip. So it's unclear. <laughs> I do not see benefits right now. iPad is already very powerful and energy effective and you will not see the same uh, speed upgrade like we had in uh, MacBook Pros when we switched from Intel to M1 chip. That is not the same <laughs> upgrade. Sure, faster is better. If you are a designer and you are using applications like Procreate or something like that, you will see benefits from M1 chip, more RAM and so on, that all will help a lot in your day-to-day -day tasks. But <laughs> for most of us, that doesn't matter. iPad is powerful already and there is no reasons to pay more just to be future-proof. If you will get used uh, 2020 iPad, you will lost very little of uh, value, you will try to resell it and upgrade later if you will really see 
the benefits from M1, M2 or whatever chip you will decide to upgrade next. That's what I am planning to do. Yeah, probably Apple will release Final Cut Pro someday later in this year or next year, but um, that will work on uh, older processors as well. I doubt that will be necessary to have M1 processor to use Final Cut Pro or whatever Pro apps will come on iPad because Apple still selling iPad Air and there are plenty of older iPads uh, in the market. So next one, what you can kind of obviously see that is the screen and yeah screen is better in uh, m1 ipad pro that hdr or whatever screen and if you are primarily watching your hdr content on ipad sure <laughs> you have to have that hdr screen but i am using tv cameras cameras are better in ipad pro for sure but i hope you are not one of those guys who are walking around and making photos with your ipad and uh, phone is more convenient for that of course there is also the central stage feature when camera in online calls follow you and so on that's great but i'm using my mirrorless camera when i am on zoom calls and so on so that that is not clear benefit for me but probably that is selling point for you i have to mention that and yeah thunderbolt 3 port versus thunderbolt 4 port 2020 ipad have thunderbolt 3 actually that's Thunderbolt port is one of the reasons why I upgraded. My old iPad had this uh, lighting port and it took ages to move files or photos to it. I really enjoy to how fast I can copy uh, files from my camera, for example, photos to iPad. And with Thunderbolt 4 port, in theory, that will be faster, but doesn't matter for my amount of data. And I doubt that my SD cards or external drives are fast enough to see the difference. New iPad supports Apple Pro Display XDR in full 6K resolution. That sounds nice in theory, but let me show how iPad supports external screens. Let's check how that will work with iPad. <laughs> How do you like that? That's just... In my opinion, that's just horrible. Very few apps support some additional features for external, external screens. Mostly that is just mirroring. Of course, that's nice to have that feature, but um, frankly, I expected that Apple will update that in iPad OS 15 update. That is not released yet. That is just beta version. Hopefully we will see something different when production version will come out for in autumn but currently it is what it is yeah, nothing great nothing nothing good uh, barely usable so yeah that is still better i hope that we will see <laughs> very different behavior somewhere later in this year probably in autumn when uh, ipad OS 15 will be released maybe that will be some middle year update and so on we'll see i hope but currently it is what it is barely usable functionality the external screen is is not great i see that that is really great device to use it as external monitor when you travel with your macbook pro and that can be as external external monitor to have more space for work that's how i use it that is really great for photo editing i really enjoy to edit photos on ipad it's great for writing usually i am in single application mode i do not care too much about multitasking on ipad especially if you if i am writing then that's great that I can just be in one app deep dive and write scripts for videos or whatever. Great for task management, really like that. All the messaging and so on, it's quite nice to keep all the messages on separate device and be in focus mode on Mac when you're programming. Reading, yeah, of course. For many cases, Kindle is better, but I do not really like how you can make notes or highlight text in Kindle, therefore I am usually reading on iPad. Not so great for video editing, LumaFusion application is not bad at all, that's a great application, I really like it, but if you compare with Final Cut Pro, that is very very big difference. In Final Cut Pro I am faster, I am more effect effective and I doubt that anyone will say that uh, LumaFusion is um, better for video editing comparing with Final Cut Pro. Yes, there are benefits. It works on iPad, it is cheaper, yeah, but 
if price is not a question and you have MacBook and are able to work on Final Cut Pro, I doubt anyone will like to work in LumaFusion on iPad, especially if you are trying to put out quite a lot of content stories, YouTube videos and so on. <laughs> and last but not least in my list, yeah, iPad for programmers. For programming, you <laughs> you do not need iPad for programming. M1 chip, older chip, whatever. MacBook Pro or Mac, MacBook Air with M1 chip, those are great machines for programming. You can add external drives, they are work better with external screens, you have all the functionality, whatever you can imagine for programming on iPad, you can barely can do something. Sure, we are waiting for new Swift Playgrounds later in this year and probably we will be able to develop and release apps to the App Store using Swift Playgrounds on uh, iPad. I definitely will try to do that just for the fun to create some small project and try to get it from start till the app store on the ipad but that still is for kind of small projects or beginners who are learning how to develop applications but you still will need macbook for real programming work let's say so really yeah. if you are curious how i'm using ipad in my day-to-day -day workflows there is video about that check that out that video is about my old ipad but with upgraded ipad use cases will still stay the same yeah i'm planning to keep use ipad in my day-to-day -day work so probably more videos will come about that if you like to see them there is a like button no subscribe button yeah you have to subscribe to do not miss them but like button works as well you can hit that if you like this video thank you for watching see you next one bye